Good morning, Shadydale Church of God. Trust everyone's doing great on this first Sunday of the month of March, March 7, 2021. This is week one of our spring lesson. So according to our lesson, spring is here. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Our subject today is Moses, uh, prophet of deliverance. Okay, let's see what our study is going to be about. Life often confronts us with situations in which we need divine help and guidance. Following the commandment of God, the people of Israel left Egypt under the leadership of a faithful prophet, Moses, who became a model for prophets to come. Okay, our, our Bible passage for today is going to be Deuteronomy, do, say that fast three times, Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 through 22. And the topics we're going to discuss is leadership, prophecy, assurance, and God's will. All right, let's take a look at our Bible background. It says, when God spoke to the Hebrews, he gave them 10 commandments at Mount Sinai. They were terrified at the thunder and lightning, the smoke and the noise that accompanied God's voice. The people asked that Moses would be the one to speak to God, to, to speak God's word to them. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Moses was one of a kind. Moses was a one of a kind prophet and leader, but he knew that he would not live forever. God's people would need future leaders to continue to guide them in serving the Lord and following his commandments. When new leadership stepped up, how would the people know whether these persons were really prophets from God? The things that these leaders proclaim actually came, if the things that these leaders proclaim actually came true. All right. Now, um, there in our Bible background, and, and uh, it kind of lets us, kind of lays down the groundwork for us. And, um, uh, and the lesson is going to get into a little bit more detail uh, in just a minute. But, um, well, I don't want to steal the thunder. <laughs> let, let me, let's just go ahead and get started in the lesson, okay? So um, our first area of study is going to be Deuteronomy 18, 15, and 16, God spoke person. I'm reading that in NIV, it says... <clears throat> In verse 15, the Lord your God will raise up you, will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Oreb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see his great fire anymore, or we will die. All right. So in the commentary, we're going to go ahead and read the commentary this time. It says, as the Hebrew people approached the promised land, Moses prepared them for times to come. The previous generations of Israelites had been afraid to enter the promised land, and God had had the people spend 40 more years in the wilderness until that generation had died off. See Numbers 14, um, 29 through 34. It says, Moses gave them instructions for many things, including how to, how legal cases were to be settled, how priests and Levites were to be provided for, and how the, this, Distestable practices of other nations would be avoided. <clears throat> the people already living in the land God was giving the Israelites practice uh, divination, sorcery, and witchcraft, and God knew it would be tempting for his own children to learn these ways. <clears throat> the Israelites would need a prophet like Moses who could lead them forward in faithfulness. Numbers 20 and 12 tells us that Moses himself would not be entering the promised land. The people of the, the person for this job was to be Joshua, who 
had not been afraid to enter the promised land, Numbers 14, 6 through 9, many people familiar with the giving of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 21 through 17 failed to realize that God spoke the commandments to all the people, not just Moses. The powerful thunder and lightning and awesome sound accompanied God's voice uh, scared the people. <clears throat> they employed Moses to speak for God rather than God speak to them directly, verses 18 and 19. Moses and the prophets who would succeed him would be the ones to relay God's word and the will of God to the people. Okay. So um, when God gave the New Testament, uh, gave the Ten Commandments, I'm sorry, uh, to the people of Israel, he gave it to Moses, but he gave it to the people at the same time. And when they heard it, it was something like they had never seen or experienced before, and they got frightened. They were scared. They were terrified. Lightning and thunder, and, and then just the majesty of his voice. And um, they didn't just get scared. They didn't just get terrified. But they got so much so terrified that they told Moses, hey, look, we want to hear from God. But we don't want God to talk to us no more. If he's got to have all that, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, and so basically what they said is, okay, Moses, you talk to God. Let God talk to you. Let him give you the instructions, and then you pass it on to us. Okay. And so um God uh, heard what they said, and he said, okay, fine. If that's what you want, I'll do that for you. Okay. And then Moses realized, okay, hey, look, I'm an old man already. I'm not gonna live forever. Okay. Um and so the prophets after me are going to have to give you the word from God as well. And so, um, and so basically they're saying, and, and when they do, you have to be able to obey them. So part of what Moses did is kind of laid down the law for them. Okay. He let them know there are certain things you should do, certain things you should not do. Okay. How do you handle legal matters? How do you handle, uh, um, different matters that come up within the camp, you know, so he laid all that out for them. And then at the same time, he said, okay, look, now you are responsible. These 10 commandments are, are commandments that you are responsible to follow, to live by. And what you are not to do is pick up the, the habits from the people um, that are outside of our covenant, that are outside of, of, of the 10 commandment uh, law, uh, Ten Commandment grace that, that was given to them, or the law that was given to them, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and so um, uh, even though they had not taken the promised land yet, they knew that once they got to the promised land, the folks there were going to have customs and, and different rituals and things that they did, witchcraft, idolatry, all, all kind of things. And God said, I don't want y'all doing that. Okay, so Moses let them know, these things you are not to pick up. So be in the world, but not of the world. Okay, so we have to live in this world, but we don't have to pick up all their habits. And that's what Moses was uh, letting the people know that, uh, that God was passing on to them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, he said that uh, once Moses left, Joshua was, go was going to be the one to take over the reign. So Joshua was going to be the next prophet after Moses. Joshua was going to be able to take them into the promised land. Uh, but Moses, as we know, from uh, previous scriptures and Sunday school lessons, uh, was not able to enter into the promised land um, due to some of the things that happened. Okay, and that's a whole other story. We won't get into that. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at what happens now. The prophet's role. Verse 17, the Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will rise up for them, a prophet like you among them from their fellow Israelites. Um, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. So that's very important. Okay. So basically God said, okay, I will honor your wishes. But now you look at this person, this is a man speaking to you. If you ignore the prophet when he's given you what I've given him to share with you, you got to answer to me. 
<laughs> so so there will be consequences for that okay um <clears throat> So, uh, and basically what, what God was saying is he's not going to just put anybody in that position. He's going to rise up people just like Moses, people that love the Lord, people that care for, uh, uh, for, for pleasing the Lord. And, and so, um, uh, and so they were to follow, um, the instructions. Now, some people might say it, it might've been better if God kept speaking to them because when God spoke, it, it literally put the fear of God in them. Right. And so if they were starting to stray and God spoke, it was snapping right back in the line. Right. And so um, <clears throat> that could have been something to keep them in place. But uh, God knew what was going to happen. So so that that was not a mystery to him. Um, OK, so <clears throat> let's see. It says, uh, we cannot blame anyone but ourselves if we fall short of God's standards. That's in Romans uh, 3 and 23. We are blessed to live in a time where God has spoken to us clearly by his son. Okay, so <clears throat> now, um, today we have prophets. Today we have pastors and preachers and teachers that share with us God's word. And, and we are responsible to hear that word. And, uh, and part of what we're going to look at here in just a minute is uh, a, a litmus test. And basically, we're able to do something similar. What I mean by that, the word says, try the spirit by the spirit. Okay, so as people share, as people prophesy, as people uh, uh, preach and teach to you, um, if it's not in the word of God, then you already know. They're not of God. They're speaking of themselves, right? And so, so we have a responsibility to listen to the voice of God, right? Think of it like this. Growing up, okay, uh, your parents, they were in control. They were the ones that told you what to do. Now, sometimes a parent had to leave, right? And the parent would leave instruction with typically the oldest child or the more responsible child. And then that child was to share those instructions with everybody else. Now, when the parents got home, if the other children didn't do, like, say the, the, the child that got the instructions told one child to wash the dishes, told one child to uh, clean up the, the living room, told another child to take out the garbage, told somebody else to mop the floor. If they got back and the floor wasn't mopped, well, guess what? The child that's supposed to get mop the floor, they were going to be in trouble. Even though the parent themselves didn't tell them, right? But uh, they were given the instruction from the parent through the other child. And so this is kind of a similar situation here. And so uh, we have to make sure. Now, there'll be sometimes that child will try to do things on his own or tell you to do things. And you kind of know, right? When, when you get some, some instructions, when some things happen, oh, that don't sound like God. You know, oh, that don't sound like some mom and daddy would say. And so um, you may, in the case, in this case, you may do it anyway but you pray about it or before you do it, you pray about it. Right. But like well, as children, what we would do, we do it anyway. And then mom and daddy get home. We ask them, mom, did you tell me to do this, such, such, such? Yeah, I did. Did you do it? Yes, ma'am. I did. Oh, good thing. I did it. Right. And then said, no, I didn't tell you to do that. Well, big brother said, you said to do that. Well, guess what? Now brother's in trouble with mama. Right. And so, um, we're going to find out uh, what happens with the prophets here if they're not uh, sharing God's word, if they end up trying to do their own thing. OK, uh, in verse 20, it says, but the prophet who uh, presumes to speak in my name, anything I have not commanded or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods with a little g um, is to be put to death. OK, uh, you may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message is not being spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message that the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. So God has given them permission. 
is to try the spirit by the spirit. So if the prophet says God is going to make it rain tomorrow, right? And it doesn't rain tomorrow, you know the prophet's doing that on his own. That's not of God. He's to be put to death. The prophet says, you know, God's going to heal your body on tomorrow, you know, and give me all your money. <laughs> you give him all your money, they're not healed by tomorrow. He's to be put to death, right? And so, um, um, but at the same time, as followers, we are to follow our leadership, okay? Um uh, when the pastor tells us, when people in leadership tell us things that God has given them, has shared with them to share with us, we have a responsibility to fall in place and to do those things. Now, as it's revealed later that this was not of God, then that person is going to have to answer. God's going to chastise them. God's going to take care. Now, we are not in that Old Testament scripture where we're going to put them to death, okay? This was Old Testament, right? New Testament, we have grace and mercy, okay? So we're not going to put the pastor to death. We're not going to put the minister to death, the preacher to death, the teacher to death, if they don't tell us 100% uh, of what God says, if they start just sharing their own things. But God will take care of that, Okay. But at the same time, he will allow us to, uh, to know what to do. He'll give us instructions on how to deal with that scenario, okay? Even in today's society, that happens. Even in today's society, we, we have false prophets, false preachers and teachers and pastors, right? And, and so um, um, we're not to just follow blindly. We're to trust and believe in the Lord, right? And, and, and stay prayed up and see... We don't want to wait until something happens to pray. We don't want to wait until we think something's wrong to pray. We need to be praying all the time, okay? And the more we pray, the more we fast, the more that we do uh, read the word and study the word, then we'll be in tune with God. He'll be able to speak to us. And we'll know sooner than later when a situation arises that is not of God. So... I hope you enjoyed our Sunday school lesson for today. I enjoyed sharing it with you. God bless you. I love you. And guess what? There ain't nothing you can do about it.